welcome to St. Aloysius Parish. Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. To prepare for today's liturgy, we ask that you please turn off all electronic devices. To aid in your participation today, we direct your attention to the inside cover of the Gather Hymnal, where many of our prayers and responses can be found. A more detailed order of service begins at number 166. The, this Mass is being offered for the repose of Valerie Pazinski and the repose of the soul of James Marshall. Please stand and join us in our opening hymn, number 742, The Church's One Foundation, 742. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With Brothers and sisters, we come together this morning to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord invites us to feast on his word, 
and on his very body and blood that is set before us here in the Eucharist. And so let us set aside now all the distractions of our hearts and minds that we might enter into these sacred mysteries. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs 
and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built a part into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
His love is brought to perfection in us. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of your hardness of hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. wedding season here at St. Aloysius. In the past uh, few weeks and in the weeks to come, we have uh, about six weddings. And yesterday uh, here in the church, uh, Vincent and Mora were married. And then on Friday, Zachary and Samantha. And so in a special way, I ask that you would pray for them, keep them in your prayers uh, today as they begin their married life together. And it's always uh, a beautiful moment for me to be able to see the joy and the celebration, not only in uh, their family and friends that come to celebrate, but in those moments when they're first able to sort of lay eyes on each other on the day of their wedding. It always happens in that opening procession. The groom comes out and he stands right here and he watches all of his friends come forward and his family and they take their place. And then it's time for him to receive his bride. And uh, there's a moment of uh, great significance. You know, the doors close after everyone else is in, and there's just these moments of waiting. And then the doors fling open, and the beautiful bride emerges. And it doesn't matter who it is, but every time it happens, my breath is taken away. 
to see the beautiful bride coming down the aisle to meet her husband. And uh, sometimes I even get a little choked up, and it's not even my wedding, and I can just imagine how it is for the groom to be able to see his bride come down the aisle, and he is able to receive her with great love. And that moment, that procession down the aisle, is significant. And all of the movements of the Mass, or every movement of a liturgical celebration, has meaning. It's not just an opportunity in that procession to get the bride from the back of the church to the front of the church, or even in that opening procession that we have during Mass. It's just not a time that we come in procession so that we can you know, sing and get ourselves from one place to another. But it's significant. The symbolism is rich. And in that procession is meant to symbolize the people of God on a journey. That on Sunday, we leave what is normal. We, we leave the earthly realm. We leave the secular and we enter into the divine. And we enter in with the cross of Christ leading us. The book of the Gospels held high, the word of God, Jesus, who is with us on the journey. And in the person of the priest is symbolized, again, Christ Jesus who accompanies us from the earthly to the heavenly. On the day of the wedding, the bride symbolizes the same thing. The husband, the bridegroom, waits for his bride. And it's meant to be this symbol of Jesus waiting for his bride. Jesus waiting for his people. And this journey that the bride takes from the back of the church to the front is this image of, again, the people of God coming to meet their beloved. And their beloved receiving them with great joy, with many emotions, the bridegroom receives his bride with an open heart. And as they move from one place to another and begin then to profess these vows, to make these promises to one another, again, their life and their love is meant to be a symbol of the faithful love of God in the world. They give to each other the gift that they give to no other person. And that's the gift of their very selves, their, their hearts. And again, their heart is given, and the heart is meant to be received. The bride and the groom, then, the husband and wife, become, again, this living image of God's love in the world. And every act of love, whether we're married or not, is meant to be, or is, a gift to us and an opportunity for us to be the presence of Christ and to manifest his love in the world. Because we know, as the scriptures say, that we love because God first loved us. And so any experience of love that we have is an experience of God. So although we might feel in, in our lives sometimes that we don't necessarily hear the voice of God, or we might... Uh, not have those moments when we've really felt his presence, every single day he offers us an encounter with him through the encounter of love. And so that's why we have to be ready to receive it. We have to be alert to notice it. But then it also means that God gives to us this gift that he gives to no other of his creatures, and that is the gift to love. And so he gives to us every day the opportunity truly to be his presence and to bring his presence into the lives of other people. Husbands and wives do that in a very special way, but no matter what our vocation is, all of us have that opportunity. And so we really need to understand that and we need to believe it, and we need to be attentive to it. But again, God calls us to be his co-workers with him. 
that as we hear and as we so often say that in order to recognize the hands and feet of Christ, the love of Christ in the world, the heart of Christ in the world, then we have to be it. We have to be the love. We have to be his hands. We have to be his feet. And it means that love always requires sacrifice and vice versa. It always means that love is meant to be the image of the faithful love of God in the world. And so that's why the scriptures, Christ himself, the church, makes such a big deal about marriage. You know, sometimes people will ask us as they, uh, you know, send us uh, an inquiry to get married here in the parish, they'll ask us about what the preparation requires. Can we just give you the date and show up on that day? The answer is no. And the answer is no, because the church loves marriage and the church cares about the marriage of these two people. And so the church wants to be sure that the man and woman have this firm foundation to promise themselves to each other in love. So they have this firm foundation so that from the day of their wedding forward, they can be this image of the faithful love of God in the world. We're serious about love because love is of God. So as we think about today, just our own lives and our own vocations that the Lord calls us to, we think about the scriptures that are set before us today. As God creates man to be in communion, God creates Eve for Adam and Adam for Eve. And in the very first words of any human being in the scriptures, Adam looks upon Eve and says, finally, she's the one, at last, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And as we make our way through the scriptures, this faithful love is highlighted for us over and over and over again. God's faithfulness to his people Israel when they rebel, when they turn away, when they choose other gods. God's faithful love to his people as we hear Jesus around the table with his disciples on the night of the Last Supper. As he was denied by them and, and as he knew he would be denied, he says, despite that, this is my body and this is my blood and this is my very life given for you. Here's my heart. And then in the same way, at the very end of the scriptures, the last image that we get is yet another image of the faithful love of God. That the bridegroom, Christ himself, returns to meet his bride. The church. Us. And bring us to our rightful place. That ultimate wedding feast. The kingdom of heaven. So today is an opportunity for us then to consider our own lives, to consider our own vocations, and to consider the different opportunities that God gives us each day to manifest his love in the world. Do we take the opportunity to do that? Do we take the opportunity to allow someone else to know the love and presence of God? And likewise, do we take the opportunity to receive the love that another desires to share with us? Simply do we take the opportunity to be the disciples and the apostles knowing Christ's love and making it known? This is the beautiful life and it's the beautiful task of each Christian. And so I invite you to be attentive to that throughout the course of the day and throughout the course of the week. Where are you able to see the presence of God through the love of other people, through the faithfulness of other people? And where is God asking you to be his presence and to bring his presence of love into the life of the other? It's an awesome opportunity that God gives to us that his love and his life could be made known through people just like you and me.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, may God hear the prayers we offer for strength, unity, and faithfulness in troubled times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God bless their efforts as they govern in peace and righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from illness, both mental and physical, may they feel the compassion of our Savior through the kindness of their caregivers. We, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples in our faith community, may God's presence in their relationship offer them strength and serenity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Father Francis Wayne Gartz, may they rest, may they find rest in the kingdom of heaven let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, the repose of Valerie Pizinski, and for the repose of the soul of James Marshall, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this Respect Life Sunday, we pray for uh, the dignity of every human life that we may recognize that in each person from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we bring to you these prayers and all the prayers of our hearts. We entrust them to you and are confident that you will answer them according to your will and for our good through Christ our Lord. Please join us in our offertory hymn, number 966. When love is found, number 966.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Aloysius, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us for our communion hymn, number 696, Ubi Caritas, number 696.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Our announcements for this weekend, uh, the Detroit Free Press Marathon is coming up on October 20th. Um, and so the church will be open about uh, seven o'clock and you're welcome to come and cheer on the marathon runners. If you are someone who uh, will be in the marathon, uh, let us know. We'll be on the lookout for you and would love to cheer you on as you pass by our church right in front here. There'll be a special blessing for runners uh, at, five, at the five o'clock mass the night before, Saturday the 19th. And our 11 a.m. Mass will happen, as usual, on October 20th. Coming up this Wednesday, October 9th, uh, the Mental Health Ministry will be praying a rosary in Capitol Park. It's appropriate. October is the month of the Holy Rosary. Um, so Wednesday, October 9th, 7 o'clock in Capitol Park. On October 15th, we'll have our next in the series um, of our Courtyard Catechesis at 7.15 Again, October 15th at the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Note the change in location. Um, and the topic is faith and finances, how we as Catholics navigate our financial responsibilities according uh, to our faith. Things like how do I create a budget that helps me pay off my student loans and also uh, stewardship to the church. Again, that's uh, October 15th at 7.15 at the Cathedral. And finally, it's everybody's favorite day. Uh, it's the annual blessing of the pets that'll happen after mass today uh, at Premier Pet Supplies, um, which is two blocks north and on the west side of Washington Boulevard. Um, so if you need to run home and, and get your pet or it's in the car or <laughs> under the pew, wherever it might be, make sure you take them with you. Uh, but again, we'll meet down at uh, Premier Pet Supply in about uh, 20 minutes or so. If you're new here and looking for more information about our parish community, I invite you to scan the QR code in the back. And also, um, as part of our parish boundary ministries, you'll notice on the back wall there um, is each of the different ministry areas. Um, there's also a card for you to take for your certain area. Um, and so it has the prayer on it that uh, we're asking you to pray. Um, and also more information about your mission territory. And if there's something that has come to you in prayer for your mission territory over the past few weeks, there's uh, some post-it notes in the back and some pens, and we're inviting you to just jot it down and then place it uh, under your specific location. Again, it's an opportunity for us all to be praying about how this parish community can be an active Catholic presence, an evangelizing presence in all of the people who are entrusted to our care. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in our closing hymn, number 641, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 641.
I was starting to. Yeah, that's the organ's fault. <laughs> 